Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular deals. Now, they're going to try and buy your treasures off you for a sum on the table today. 200. You like that? I'd like more of them. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say there's no way, Jose. Don't accept that. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We might just get you a little bit more money there. Any further bits now in the room? I'm going to be on hand at all times to help and advise, so you have nothing to worry about. Today, the show comes to you from Warrington. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. What are they going to do? Are they going to walk away with cash in their pocket? Are they going to gamble and go to auction? I don't know, but I know one thing. They want the real deal. It's the first deal of the day here in Warrington, and who better to kick us off than Tim Hogarth and Crystal? Today I brought in my 95-96 sign Man United football, and I'm probably looking around for about 80 to 120 pounds for it. Hello, Crystal. Hi, Tim. Now, you've brought a football along today. I have, yes. Now, I need you to help me with this football. Basically, it's the 1996 squad that right. have signed the ball. So, how did you acquire this then, Crystal? Uh, and are you a Manchester United fan? <laughs> I'm not a Manchester United <laughs> fan, no. You're not? <laughs> no. The oh. reason why I've got this ball is basically I had 100% attendance at high school mm. and a Manchester United representative used to sponsor the school and he used to bring prizes in for star pupils and they pulled my raffle ticket out <laughs> and they gave me this ball. <laughs> and I've had it for 17 years and it's been stuck in a cupboard. So what team do you support? Manchester City. <laughs> It's really bad, I don't know. But it's terrible. I couldn't part with it at the time because my father's a Manchester United fan. Yeah. And so is my son. But I'm expecting a baby, so we're recouping some funds to go towards. To go part. towards. So, do you know any of the names on here? Yeah, I don't know a few on there. I can show you from here. And there's names like Schmeichel, Paul Scholes. I think I've heard of him. We've also got Teddy Sheringham and Ryan Giggs here. And there's a couple of signatures on there that I haven't been able to find out who they are. You got an idea of how much it's worth? Mm, I have. You don't ish. want to share it with me? Not at this moment in time, no. Oh, please, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to help you out, but that's You've never you seen a grown man beg. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try and, and, and buy it. £50. Pounds. David's come again. <laughs> <laughs> this is Man U. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and the estimation from the auctioneer is 80 to 120. I think the Beckham signature's worth that kind of money. And you've got lots of great players. You know, Schmeichel's there, you've got Giggsy still playing for Man U. Now, ideally, these sell well, of course, at a charity auction. I'm surprised you haven't thought to yourself, with all your gold shops, We'll have a charity auction one night. You know, I never thought of that, David. <laughs> Maybe you should be running a raffle. This is Man U. It's not too far from where you live. You never know what you could get for it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, he has these ideas, doesn't he, really? And it's quite a good idea, that. A hundred pounds. And I've never bought a football <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I mean, it's a fair offer. It's a fabulous offer, Crystal. <laughs> I know everyone says it is the only way I can squeeze any more out of you for the cause of what it's going to. £110. OK, and that's the limit. That's it. I'd like to do a deal then, if that's OK. Thank you very much, Thank Crystal. You. I can't believe I've just paid £110 <laughs> for a football. <laughs> When David came in, he gave me a really, really good idea, and I'm going to donate this football to the Forget Me Not Children's Hospice in Huddersfield for them to auction. Hopefully, they'll raise lots of money. And we hope so too, Tim. David, nice Up next, David's brought something in for Helen Gardner. 
My next item is a gold watch, quite one of these swanky gold watches, which I'm very sure that men love to wear, but I don't particularly like buying, but hi-ho, it's nice, and maybe I'll have a go at it. Now, you've brought in a gold watch. Yes. Is this your gold watch? It is. Why are you selling your watch? Well, I don't wear it, basically. I only I, I have other watches, and it was left to me by an uncle about 15 years ago. He emigrated to America after the Second World War, and he came over about 15 years ago and gave me that watch, and then went back again. Uh, and he died shortly afterwards. So I see. He had no family, so... so you inherited it? Inherited it, yeah. And uh, it's just basically in a drawer, and I, I never wear it. Do you know how much money you want for this gold watch? I have an idea at the back of my You've mind. You've got an idea. Well, I think Long Jeans is a Swiss make. Yes. Uh, a very good Swiss make. So this watch would have been an expensive item. Yeah. Well, I'll put down some money. I don't know if I'll buy your watch, but I'll make right. you an offer, and... If it's not good enough, you can always take it to auction, get a little bit more. Okay. A lot of guys like gold watches. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's 100. It's 200. It's 300 pounds for your gold watch. No. You're not even impressed when I Scottish hundreds. No. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> There's 350. Am I getting any warmer? No. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's £400 for your watch. I couldn't let it go for that. You couldn't let it go for no. that? That's 450 for your watch. No, I think we're still short. You think I'm still short? Yeah. 470 for your watch. No. No. 490 for your watch. A little bit more. I'm running out of money here. £500 for your watch. Now, it's possible, <laughs> it's possible the price of gold in Cromarty <laughs> is not quite what it is in the UK. <laughs> Seven to eight, eight to nine are the two valuations. And believe it or not, the price of the metal there is £800, should we wish to scrap it. Well, no one's going to scrap a Longines watch, but that's what the metal, the precious metal, is worth. I'm going to leave you with the canny lady and see if she decides to put any more money down. I do think that you would do very well in auction with it. I'll put another... I'll put another £40 on the table. Well, I think in the light of what David said, it's got to go to auction. I think you're making the right choice and I hope you do really well with it. And think about my wee Scottish hundreds. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. It's been great fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's over to the cell room where Max Blackmore is warming up his gavel. Our seller David can't make it, but he sent his son Ian along instead. Helen eventually offered 540 quid. What would you have done in father's place? Would you have taken the 540 quid? No, I, I think, or would you have said, no, I'm going to auction? Yeah, I think he did the right thing, coming to auction. So you've gambled? Yes. It's OK, been. right. The estimation here in the cell room is seven to 800 quid. Are there any instructions that have come down from Dad? If we get a few quid on this, are you into a few quid? <laughs> I'm sure it's negotiable, yeah, <laughs> if, it, if it does well. <laughs> OK, it's coming up now. Let's see what it brings. This is rather smart-looking gentleman's wristwatch. Start with somewhere. 800. It's a nice watch, this one. 800. 600 we can start at. And further bids now at 600. 620. Telephone bid has just come in. 660. 680 in the room, 700 now on commission, 720 we're on the phone, 740. 740 is a bid with the auction. 760, 780 in the room, 800 on commission, 820 commission's out, room's out, 820 on the phone. Gavel has just gone down at £820. That was just over at the scrap value of the precious metal. We have a commission to take off. £672 you will be taking home for father. Yes. Do you think he's going to be happy? I'll be well pleased with that, yes. Well pleased? Yes, well pleased. You're going to be satisfied? I'm very satisfied. Do you think you're going to get a drink out of this I'll now? Get, I'll get a few drinks out of that. We're back in the den and Mary's hoping that her item will take the fancy of Ian Towning. My expectation is about a couple of hundred pounds and uh, Ian being the jewellery man, I'm hoping he'll do a good deal for me today. They're very clean. 
very well looked after and I do wish I can buy them. Hi, I'm Ian. Hi, I'm Mary. Mary, lovely to meet nice you. To meet you. Very nice match pair, set of pearls, I must say, belong to you. Uh, yes, they've been in the family for years. Um, I was left them by my aunt when she died, and I've just kept them in a drawer for 20 years. You've never worn them? No. <gasps> These have been well looked after. They haven't been sprayed with perfume. No. They haven't got makeup in between each pearl that we have to scrape off with a knife, you know. <laughs> so they're very nice and clean. The little clasp, you know, has got tiny little diamonds in it. It's nine carat white gold. It's very pretty. Very simple, very easy to wear. I think every lady should have a row of pearls, a pearl bracelet, and pearl earrings, and a pearl ring. I think it's the most elegant thing a lady could wear. It's so sad that you're selling them, really. Do you have any idea of the value of them? Uh, yes, I do. You've been checking it out. I have, yes. <laughs> You've been checking out. Um, 50, 100, 150, right? Um, more than that. More than that. Mm. Okay. 170. That's the sort of margin they would be in. Hi, David. <laughs> well, let's have a look at them. Well, they're attractive. Cultured pearl. Cultured. Nice clasp on there. 150, 200 pounds seems to be around the indication from our independent valuers and auctioneers. 170 is on the table. The question is, if I send you to the auction or push you in that direction, can you do any better? Well, if you got 200 pounds in an auction, they would have to take off you 30 pounds, which would bring you back to that. Yeah. So to go to the auction, I need to be confident I can get you more than 200, mm -hmm. and I'm not. You can gamble by all means, and I'll be delighted to take you to the auction, but I don't think we'll get a lot more than 200. Choice is yours. <laughs> you know, I think it's a very fair offer. You know, I've got to make a profit. Are you happy with the offer? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And enjoy the money. I do hope you're going to spend it on something exciting. Oh, my daughter's starting uni, so it's going to. So it's going to, to your thing. daughter. <gasps> Didn't last long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, some things impress David. Desirable, wanted, fabulous. But will it bowl Brenda over? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Warrington in Cheshire. Some early 20th century local glassware painted by celebrated pottery artist Richard Joyce has appeared on Brenda's table. This is going to be good because I love Pilkington glass and it's got a lovely design on it. Perfect for me. My mum said that I can't accept any lower than 300 for it. Don't panic, Rachel. David and auctioneer Max Blackmore are ready to offer their help if this deal gets tough. Richard Joyce. Yes, I Pilkington. So. Yes. Oh. My granddad used to work for Pilkingtons. No. Yes, he did. So he got this from? He got, I, I believe, he got this from Pilkingtons and then it was passed down to my mum because wow. he's passed away and then my oh. mum's just recently passed it to me. I love it. It's I lovely. love it. It's fabulous. It's lustre wear. Yes. But the design is very... Oh, 1910? Yes. That sort of period. I love it. Can I ask why it's blue inside? Just the way that they did it, really, to, to get the luster looking Does that through. Blue give the it, it, burgundy? Yes, it, it comes through. Can you see the stripes coming through? Yeah. It's just the way that the designer right. wanted it, basically. I love it. Pilkington, Royal Lancastrian, Richard Joyce. Am I right in saying, Max, these are goods of the moment? Yeah, this is doing exceptionally well, this luster wear at the moment. And I have to say, under the bright lights for the cameras, it looks a lot better than when it came in through the door. It really is a nice piece. Now, I know Brenda, and I've known her for many years. She's a shrewd dealer. I'm sure she'll want to buy this. Let's see what she puts on the table. 50. You like that? I'd like more of them. A hundred. hundred and fifty. 
I know. 200, 250. No. Do I like it enough? Yes, you do. 300. What do we think about that? We don't think a lot about that, and <laughs> I'll tell you why. I know your expectations of this is not so high. Pilkington, Royal Lancastrian, nicely signed by Joyce. It really is a superb quality item, which is very much in vogue at the moment. Five to seven, five to eight hundred is the estimation. So we're way out here. We need to go to auction with this, and I'll tell you why. Once this gets on the internet, once it gets in the antique newspapers, there will be reasonably fierce competition. And believe you me, their bags won't be closed. But mine isn't either. No. He jumped the gun, didn't he? He did. He did. <laughs> there you go. Let's go. 400. 500. You're getting there. I'm getting there. Yes. Now, before you get tempted, let me spell it out to you much more clearly. Desirable, wanted, goods of the moment, fabulous. Do not be fooled that another 200 quid has been slipped onto the table. It is worth more. He doesn't want me to have it, you know. <laughs> I've, just... I've worked it out. He wants it at auction. I'm going to make him work for his money. 550. 600. I think you can get more at auction. Do you want to have a gamble? No, I'm going to take your offer because you, you said sure? you loved it, yeah. And I want it to go you, if you love it, yeah. Absolutely yeah, sure, absolutely because sure. I don't want you no, to then regret it. No, no, I won't regret it. It's going to a good home. Mum's going to be happy. And Mum's going to be yeah. happy. Lovely. Thank you very much, Thanks Brenna. ever so much. Shaking hands, deal has been done. What do you think? Mm. Have we missed I, one here? I would have liked to have had a bash with that, I have to say, yes. But, you know, the lady's got a deal and she's happy with it, so, c'est la vie. Well, that was a bit of a tussle, wasn't it, with David? I mean, £600, I paid fair money for that. I really did. And can't say fairer than that, Brenda. What's this piece of silver over at Tim's? Nice medals come onto the table. Um, has got some issues, but I would like to buy it. Maybe if, if it gives me something like 45 to £50, pounds, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Hello, Mark. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. Now, you've brought in a South African Boer War medal. That's correct, yeah. It belonged to my great-grandfather originally in the Boer War, 1901-1902, and it's been passed down through the family. It was, was, was with my granddad. Yes. And then when my granddad died, um, it's been with us ever since, really. So you've decided to sell it now, then? Yeah, it, it's probably been in a drawer more, more, more <laughs> than it hasn't, really. My, my son's maybe taken it out and I'd look at it a few times, but yeah. we heard about today. I thought we'd come along and try and see what come it was along. worth. See what the family heirlooms are Indeed, there. Indeed, yeah. I, I can tell you a little bit about it. Yeah. Like you say, it's 1901-1902, and these are what they call clasps. So the more clasps a medal has, the better it has. And these are oh, where right. he's been, you see. And then the detail of the soldier is round here. Yeah. So it's Private J Burns, J Burns yeah. Right, yeah. And he was in the Manchester Regiment. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so we've got all the information there. And then on, on the back, just South Africa. And the yeah. king there is uh, King Edward the Seventh. That's right, yep. Yeah. It has got a bit of a ding on it there. Yeah. Don't know if you've seen that. Did you drop that, Mark? No, I I'm, I'm wasn't aware of that before. Yeah. I really looked at it that closely, really, I suppose. On its own, it has got some value. Not a huge value in medal terms. I mean, some medals are worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, you know, like a Victoria <laughs> Cross. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. But I shall make you an offer. OK. See what we can do. 20... 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Yeah, we're hoping for a little bit more than that. If we... It doesn't seem a lot of money, sir, <laughs> may I say, for a Boer War medal. <laughs> 50 to 60 is what the independent values are saying. I thought that was a little bit on the conservative side. Medals as... are doing quite well. They are doing well, David, but it has only got two clasps and nothing fabulous on it, really. No. 
It's always very sad when you see medals and we start to value them in 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, knowing what men have had to have gone through to yeah. be awarded, even service medals. Uh, I'd like to try and see another tenor's worth or something like that. I'll leave you with Tim, he's can be quite generous. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think, I have one person who buys medals off me and I'm trying to think what he gave me for the okay. last one of these <laughs> yeah. that I had. Yeah. 50 pounds, Mark. Um, well, I think bearing in mind what David said to him, I, th I think that's a fair offer, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to accept that offer. Brilliant, thank you very much. Thanks thank very you much. for coming along. I think I could have bought it for £40 had David not come in. <laughs> Maybe Tim, but David's always looking out for our sellers, and we might be needing his help in Ian's next deal. Plastic, ice bucket. I thought I'd just bring it in today just for for a bit of fun and see if it was uh, worth any money. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh all you like, Ian, but our seller's going to prove his plastic's fantastic. Well, Andrew, what do we have here? Well, plastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit of a design icon, isn't it, from the 70s? Cosmos, ice bucket. Have well, you ever used it? Never been used, but I used to like Perno. I used to drink Perno. Oh. You used to have uh, lemonade, orange. How did you used to have yours? On the rocks, my darling. Everything on the rocks. I love it on the rocks, you know. And if you look at this box, it says Bourbon. Oh. That's part of my family name. Oh, is it? It is, yes. I've got it in for you. And it has a pair of tongs. Yeah. All in plastic. And it works. Wow. <laughs> and you never used it? No. It's a shame you didn't use it. It used know. to be my parents and... It belonged to your parents? Yes. And it's been in this box since the 70s? Yes, yes. So why did they buy it? Uh, I have no idea. To tell you honestly, in my shop, it would look really out of place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is plastic. <laughs> but I'll make you an offer. OK. You, you might think it's an insult. Put all them down. All of this? <laughs> well, that would be over generous, I think. I don't know, 20 pounds. What do you think of my offer of £20? I was hoping for a little bit more, you were I've got to say. <laughs> well, we think that's rubbish, because a man that drinks Perno on the rocks, especially on the terrace of the palace at San Moritz, <laughs> 20 quid? Are you saying, love, that you can't put that on your wrist or round no. your neck? Exactly, exactly, exactly. OK. <laughs> well, the real truth is, the independent values of the auctioneer, they're all saying 15, 20 quid. Yeah. How much more do you want for this? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It might be worth going to the auction, just... Uh, you think so? Yes. Well, I have a feeling if you go to auction, I don't think you'll get any more. It's only because you found someone who drinks Perno on the rocks with no water. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's your choice. If you yeah. want to gamble, my opinion is that's not a bad offer, but I'll leave it to you. No, I think I'll take it to auction. Fantastic. I recommend auction. I don't auction. think you really wanted it anyway. <laughs> I think auction is the best place, yeah. you know, and see what happens. Yeah. Fingers crossed, good Ice luck in auction. Collections. Ice bucket collectors, yeah. whoever, yeah. you know. You decide to gamble. Yeah. Have you done the right thing? I don't know, but as long as somebody else gets some use out of it, I'm, okay. I'm, I'll be quite happy. Well, it's here in the sale with the £15 reserve, so if it does sell, minus the commission, you could be worse off. Yeah. OK. It's coming up now. Is it going to sell? I have no idea. Let's find out. 1970s or 80s Perno advertising bucket in the form of a curling stone. £30, 20 Advertising stuff, quite collectible nowadays, at £15 on commission then, at £15, at 20 In the room, cushions out. In the room at £20 now. At £20, any further bids now, all done and going. Now, the gamble's just gone down at £20. We have some commission, which is 15%, and a little bit of that on yeah. the commission. I make that between £16 and £17. 
the real deal will go to Ian Towning at £20. Yeah. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'll go out tonight and have a couple of drinks, maybe have a poo now. Coming up, will David's words be sweet music to Brenda's ears? Is there any chance, Brenda? I have to say this. I'll go on to one knee. Is there any chance, oh, Brenda, go. of a little bit more? <laughs> Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The people of Warrington are still pouring in with their treasures, and Brenda's glowing about her next item. We've got some gold. It's about time it came to Brenda's table. But how much will you pay for it, Brenda? Hi, Jeanette. Nice to meet you. And you. You've brought me some gold. I have, yes. Okay, tell me where you got the gold from. Um, these were my late mother in law's. Was this an investment that she had? I think it must have been because I don't remember seeing her wearing them. So, and why are you wanting to sell them? Because they've been in the family for quite a while. I would never dream of wearing them. No. Bit too bling? Yes. <laughs> what we've got here, we've got a sovereign, a sovereign, half a Kruger Rand which is obviously South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then we've got two chains, nine carat, nine carat. So we know that they're usually put in nine carat mounts. If these were in proof condition, which means they're still in a little cover mm -hmm. and people haven't handled them, then they would be more collectible. But at the moment, these are just worth a gold weight. I hate scrapping things, so whatever I buy tends to be sold as they are, and I don't have scraps. All right? So, on that, shall I get some money out? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Is that the right colour? All right. 100. 200. Three hundred, all nice new tidy notes. Four hundred. Oh, an old one. Four hundred and fifty. Carry on. Oh, is that a no then? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Five hundred and fifty. What do we think about that? Very desirable. Independent value as an auctioneer say six to seven hundred pounds. Dare we say the scrap value as of today, six sixty. Now, is there any chance, Brenda? I have to say this. Oh, I'll go on to one knee. Is there any chance, Brenda, go. of a little bit more? <laughs> we know you've got us, shall we say, tied up in knots. <laughs> go away, David. I'll see what I can do. Okay. You see, you see. <laughs> The purse is still open. Good sign. <laughs> I will give you another ten pounds. Making five sixty. I'm not scrapping them. I'm going to put them in the shop and sell them. That's what I'm doing. You want to say yes. You want to take the money because it looks lovely. I'll do it. I knew you would. Enjoy the money. Thank you. We're back in the den and Jane's trying her sterling best to impress Helen. Gave us a clean last night and I just thought I'd pop along and see what Helen thought. I haven't got a clue what it's worth. Jane, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Now, you brought in a very nice cruet set. What can you tell me about the cruet set? Where did you get it? Uh, well, it was tucked away in a cupboard that was cleaning out. It belonged to my mother and she let me have it. And apparently it belonged to her grandmother, so it was actually great-grandmother's. So it's been in the family a long time? Yes. yes. It's rather nice. It's very pretty. My mum was a hotel caterer and she did use it on the occasions on the top table for the bride and groom. I can see that it has been used. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's very pretty. And it's nice to be complete. Yeah. This would have probably been a, a, a wedding present mm. at some point. Yes. For your great-grandmother, was yes, it? Yes, It may have been a wedding possibly, present yeah. for her. Uh, it's around the turn of the century in Edwardian. People don't tend to use this kind of thing nowadays, but it is nice if you're setting out an elegant formal table, yeah, like yeah. for a bride. Yeah, so. so, why are you selling it now, Jane? It's just tucked away in a cupboard, collecting dust. You don't and... use it? No. Well, I quite like it. It's rather nice. The only thing I can see that's missing is 
the blue glass salt liners. Mm -hmm. They would have been in the salt dishes to stop the salt corroding the silver. Right. Now you actually have the one in the mustard pot here, which is rather nice. This can be made, modern mm -hmm. ones, yeah. but it's nice when the original one's there. And that was to stop the condiments corroding the silver. I'm going to put some money on the table okay. and you tell me when you think I've put enough down. So I'm going to put down 20, 40, look at these nice Scottish pound notes, 60, 80, 100 pounds. What do you think about that offer? I think it's a good offer, but I think a little bit more. A little bit more. Apparently they are quite old. Yes, they are old. They're about 1900 and they're very pretty. And I do like them. I don't know how practical it will be for somebody to use today. Like you said, you don't use yes, them. Yeah. I'll put down a little bit more, but it won't be much more. How about another 20 quid, another Scottish 20? 120 pounds. I'm getting very close to where I want to be now, Jane. Well, just before you say anything, Jane, let me tell you what I think about it. It's beautifully cased. A very nice set. The independent valuers and the auctioneer, they're saying 80 to 120. In some ways, I do feel uh, that these estimates are far too low, but I can tell you in the sale room, they're fairly accurate. Now, what's on the table, though it's Scots money, <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> Scottish. Scottish. The wee Helen has put down some of those notes from across the border. Are they... Are they legal currency down here? Well, one, if you can change them, they are. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of the day, I have to say that's a good, honest price. OK, thank you. Jane, there's nothing I can add to that. Okay. I've, I've given you a very fair price for it. You've got my offer. Jane, what are you going to do? I'll take your offer. You're going to take the money? And I can change them for English notes, if right. you like. If you prefer. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, dear! Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm really pleased with 120. I didn't realise that it was even worth that, so um, really, really pleased, yes. That deal ended well. But after the break... Could a girl's best friend be sparkling round Ian's little finger? We just need more money on the table. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. As a busy day in Warrington draws to a close, we have time for one last dazzling deal. I've seen Ian looking at it, very um, hunger in his eyes, I think. So, um, if it goes according to plan, there might be a few thousand pounds in there. That sounds hopeful, Jill. Let's find out. A very typical 70s ring. <laughs> yes, it is. Stands out immediately. May I ask why you want to sell it? When my mum passed away, sadly, she left me all her jewellery, most of which had been bought in the 70s. Um, I've held on to it for 15 years, and it's not becoming wearable so it's just in a box. The fashion isn't that anymore, unfortunately. Exactly. It's a very attractive ring. It's in very good condition. The diamonds are drawing a lot of colour. Mm. I think you probably have noticed that. They pull a lot of yellowy colour to them. Yes. So yes. that can be off-putting, but the sapphires are really quite pretty. They're Indian sapphires. They're not black, black, you know, like the Australians can be very dark sapphires. They're a lot dark. Yeah, aren't they? And people don't like them. Yes. Whereas at least here you can see the blue and the sapphire, which is quite lovely. Mm. It's not an easy item to sell. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say 50, 100, 150, 200, 50, 300. 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 950, 1000. Okay? 50, 100, 150. 200, 250, 300, 350, 
400, 450, 500. <laughs> You'll get tired before I do. I bet I will. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is coming to join us. We've got 2.3 carats of diamonds, we've got 3.3 carats of sapphires, a rather ostentatious and showy ring. We know who likes ostentatious and showy rings, but the estimate is three to five thousand pounds. What we need to do now is persuade someone who likes showy, decorative pieces of jewellery to I wonder put, who that would be. I wonder who that would be. <laughs> to put more money on the table. I'm going to leave it with you. Thank you. I wouldn't want to pay more than the break value of the ring, yeah. which is like 1,500 pounds, OK? And you know, something like this is far better in the auction room, where you have a wider range of people who will go for it, mm. you know, and it's difficult for me to sell. I don't think he's going to go anymore. And okay. because he's not going to go anymore, you and I will be going to the sale room. <laughs> no, I, I think the real place for it is in the auction room, OK, really. that's fine. Um, have you been to auction before? I've attended some, but I haven't really sold anything. Never sold anything. No. Well, I wish you the best of luck, fingers crossed, mm. and make a lot of money. Good okay, luck at the auction. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We saw Ian offer £1,500 for the diamond and sapphire ring, but it wasn't enough for Jill. You and I will be going to the sale room. But will all the single ladies and other buyers be there? Jill's partner, Donald, hopes so. Now, he's come along in his very smart attire. In fact, he's probably going out for an evening out with his dinner suit. He's got his bow tie, his waistcoat, his shirt, and I have to say, he looks an absolute Bobby Dazzler. Now, there has been some conversation between the auctioneer and your partner, and they've set a reserve at two and a half thousand pounds. That's correct, yes. She's happy with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is there somebody here that wants to buy a smart-looking item, which is a bit blingy, but there's a lot for your money. Well, we're about to find out. 334A, this large diamond sapphire cluster ring. I feel a million dollars wearing that. What do you say about it? Start me somewhere. £3,000. £3,000, no? What about starting at £2,000, then? Are they going to bite on this? At 1850 at 1900 at 1950 at 2000 at £2,000. There's a telephone bit of coming in now. Two, two. Two, three. Two, four. Two, five. Two, five on the telephone. Two, six in the room now. 2,700. 2,800. Back in the room. No? We're in the room and selling then at £2,800. £2,800. There is a deduction to make from that. First of all, what's your reaction to that? Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. OK, quick calculation, £2,400, thereabouts, just a few pounds over, and that was the real deal. Bling, bling. Should have put a better deal on it, Ian. And what sparkling profits have our dealers made today? Brenda didn't make any money. Go away, David. I'll see what I can do. OK. She may have splashed over £1,000, but she's decided not to sell just yet. She's keeping the gold sovereigns as an investment and is sending the Pilkington vase off to auction in London. Canny lady, Brenda? <laughs> I've never bought a football. <laughs> <laughs> Tim acted on David's advice and donated his football to the Forget-Me-Not Children's Hospice in Huddersfield, where it raised £200 at a charity dinner. And was his generosity repaid with the Boer War Medal? I think I could have bought it for £40 had David not come in. <laughs> well, sort of. Tim made some money back by putting the medal up for sale on the internet, where it sold for £70 within the week. Helen was very keen on the silver cruet set. Well, I quite like it. It's rather nice. And so was the customer who bought it from her shop. But she only made £20 profit too. Surely you did better, Ian. Ian sold the pearl necklace on to a private client for £220. Getting better, but still not as good as our sellers, who walk away with almost £5,000. Well done, gang. 
We've had an exciting day here in the sale room. There's been plenty of action, lots of bidding and lots of buying. Now, that's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. GTFN, ta-ta for now.